former World Cup alpine skier and winner of six Olympic medals. A year ago, he and his wife, pro volleyball player Morgan, lived through every parent's worst nightmare when their 19-month-old daughter, Emmy, drowned in a neighbor's swimming pool. And they're here today to tell their brave story in hopes of sparing other families the same pain. Please give a warm home and family welcome to Bodie and Morgan Miller. Thank you very much for being here. It's incredible. It really is. What you went through is unimaginable and honestly could happen to any of us. And I think many people out there are wondering how you're able to get up in the morning, have the strength to get out there and share your story in order to help others. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's different every day, honestly. Yeah. It's like there was, in the beginning, I think, being open about it and, and making sure that we were at least filling in the gaps that we felt like were left for us. Like, we didn't, we didn't know certain things. We were doing things that parents do all the time. You know, floaties in our own pool. Our, our kids always had their little floaties on, and mm -hmm. they were very life jackety kids. We thought that was good. It turns out that's pretty much the worst thing you can do for your kids in a, in a you know, a recreational pool setting. So, I mean, we, we wanted to sort of fill in that gap, but... Honestly, there's days where we just have to support each other and, you know, and try to, the, the kids really do help because they demand attention and love and they, you know, life goes on. But it's just such an extreme case of one of those things where you, you know, you're supposed to just pick yourself up and, and continue, but it's just the, the extreme level of, of emotion and loss is just, it makes it really difficult. It's, it's unimaginable. Any mother can understand your pain. Mm -hmm. you, you still have a, a, a house full of kids ages 11 to nine months old, and you all have really had to rely on one another to get through. How do you guys do that? I think every parent can touch on the joy that children bring. Especially little, baby, little <laughs> yeah. babies. You know, they're all great, but little babies are kind of the best, and having a, a nine-month-old at home has been like a, a really welcome distraction, I think, and, and a good focus for all of us to, because the other kids, too, you watch them, you know, it was it was their little sister too. So you know that it's hard to even know what that does to them. But having a a new little sibling is, I think, is pretty. It's special for them as well. And allowing us ourselves to lean on our children in a way um, and experience life through their eyes at times is it kind of allows you to escape from those moments of grief because. It, Children are so amazing at living in the moment, and even though they still experience the grief and the sadness that we, we do, like, they see a swing set, and they're still so excited to go and experience life at that moment, and allowing ourselves to continue down that path with them is really helpful. And let me say this, too, that uh, uh, spreading awareness like you're doing in, in such difficult circumstances is such a generosity and a kindness to others to help them try and you know spare for themselves from the, the same pain um, and to point out that drowning is the number one uh, injury related uh, cause of death of children under the age yeah. of four years old so what is it out there that you would like people to know about uh, pool safety what do you what is the message and some of the things that we can all do well, I think you know it's interesting because auto accidents used to be number one and mm -hmm. then the advent of car seats and that, that all of a sudden made laws, legislation, but the technology came into play and that moved that immediately down for that age group. And now here we are with, a, in my opinion, a, a really solvable problem, but the technology isn't quite there and we're starting to see the advent of, of new pieces of protective layering and, and systems. But for us, I think Morgan did a really good job of coming up. If, you, if your child can, can move, they can float. And if they can walk, they should be able to swim. And the fact is, whether they're at your house, their friend's house, somewhere around, you know, anywhere, really, they're going to face water, period. And, you know, it seems a little bit crazy if you hadn't thought of it before, but the ISR lessons or whichever lessons you choose to do, you can have a six-month-old that can self-rescue. They can float on their own. And then, you know, by the time they can walk, they can easily flip over, paddle to the side, and get out of the pool. And to me, that's, you know, it's probably the greatest gift you could give your kids. A thousand percent. I mean, it can happen so quickly. As Cameron said, it's the number one cause of death for children under four years old. Well, and I think that's one of the things that was the most surprising for us, that and every parent who's had a, had a child that's drowned, um, 
they all say the same thing. Like, how did we not know this? How is this not something that's talked, uh, spoken about? It's not talked about that the number one thing that can take your child from you if they're five years and younger is drowning. And the number two thing for 18 and younger is drowning. And it's not something that's talked about. And simple things, uh, um, understanding warning signs, understanding um, age groups that are the most susceptible of those accidents, like those are things that need to be put out, put out there. And just the intensity behind the conversation and understanding truly what it is. Not that this was a careless, mm -hmm. Um, mistake. It is something that is a problem throughout the entire world and it's something that's so solvable and so preventable if we just have the conversation. And it can happen in the in a matter of seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds. You can turn around and if a child falls in a pool it is it's like that. Mm -hmm. And you have since installed a new safety detection system in your own pool. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah the coral drowning detection system is a artificial intelligence camera it's solar powered, it sits on the edge of your pool and basically never goes to sleep. It's the terminator of keeping your, your pool safe, essentially, and it identifies if anyone ever goes in the pool. So in this case, unauthorized access is probably the most impactful for residential pools because it's when a kid sneaks out the backyard or you think they're sleeping and they're, you know, they're trying to go swimming um, and somehow they get through the pool fence or, you know, again, we believe in this layering system. But this is kind of the final, the final layer, and it never goes to sleep. It's monitoring your pool all the time. And then if there's a drowning event, you could have six or eight people in the pool, and if somebody slips under and, and no one else notices them, it'll identify that drowning scenario as well. And it alarms on your phone. It alarms on the unit itself, which is on the edge of your pool, and on a separate alarm that's inside your, your home. So nothing's perfect. There is no solve-all right now, but as we layer these solutions on top of each other, um, you know, eventually I think we're going to get there where drowning is a, is a super shocking, strange thing as opposed to something that we hear about every day. Fantastic. I, I never even would imagine that something like that existed. So thank you yeah. for, uh, you know, enlightening us with that for sure. I'd love to also just talk a little bit more uh, about your beautiful Emmy. And I know it's important to, to both of you to keep her presence uh, in your home even now. And so when you think at, about Emmy, what makes you smile? Um, you know, it, there's a lot. We have, we have so much um, sort of legacy parts of her around the house, pictures, but also the toys she used to play with and the way she destroyed things. We kept most of her stuff because the boys loved playing with her stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. I think as older brothers, every person who has multiple kids knows they just take everything away from the younger one. But with Emmy, it was an anomaly. They didn't really take her stuff when she had it. They kind of had to respect her because she was... Um, in a lot of ways tougher than they were so she would she would just you know manhandle the boys so now they get to play with their stuff without having to to battle with her um, but we do I mean we do a lot of activities we go a lot of places that we went with her so there's kind of this revisiting all the time which I think is it's really hard but I think it's also really good it, it definitely feels like she's still you know central to the to the family in a lot of ways thank you for sharing that thank you for uh, both of you for being here today and sharing these insights and the wisdom uh, it's a, a real inspiration. For more information, visit PoolSafely.gov, everybody.